I'm Max Venus, and in this video, we're gonna look at the EQ tools in FL Studio. Okay, so I've got this drum loop here. Just a little break. Um, so the first one we're gonna check out is the parametric EQ. Now, this is the original Fruity EQ. Uh, we don't really use it anymore, but it's great for if you're struggling on a project with high CPU, you just need to low cut, maybe high cut something. It's great for doing those kind of things. It's really lightweight. So there's no kind of graphical interface. You've got a curve at the bottom and some faders, and you can adjust the cue. And you can adjust the different uh, EQ curves that you're using at the top. Again, it's a little bit fiddly, bit of a small UI. I wouldn't really recommend it for any detailed work. So that takes us on to the parametric EQ2 here. Now, this is probably what you'd want to be using if you're EQing a vocal or something more that requires a bit more detail. So you can expand it at the bottom here and you can make the UI big or small, depending on what you fancy. You can also go full screen by pressing enter. I'm just going to enable it here. Turn off the first one. So you can see you've got a, a graphical representation of the frequency response there. Really helpful for soloing out certain, certain frequencies. So you've got a low, uh, a high and a low shelf on the, on the end here. You can also change the different types. So you can disable high pass, low pass, uh, all the different kind of shapes you'd expect in your EQ. So I'm probably gonna use a high pass on that. Just take out any low rumble. You can see that there's the snares hitting right here. So you can quickly and easily just remove any frequencies you see fit. Just gonna home right in on that little. This is a much more surgical tool that you can use. So another thing, thing to note at the top, you've got some good useful references. So sub and bass and low mid and mid. It gives you a good indication of where these things are. So you can boost the treble here. There's some uh, shortcut keys. You can hold control here. And you can really get into detail. So it basically slows the movement of your mouse and you can really fine tune that. It also works by scrolling the uh, mouse wheel to adjust the cue there. Look at some of the order settings as well. This is great on the low cut, so you can change the, how steep that low cut is. So you can see going all the way up to a quite steep and aggressive low cut there. So there's the option to do some comparing here. So you can store uh, your current settings. So you can store it there by pressing this down arrow there. Then you can make some amendments. Maybe you wanna try something out on this drum loop. really boosting the highs there, and then you can flip between and have a listen. So you can go straight back to where you were effectively. You've also got the option to uh, turn the, uh, to adjust the frequency here at the bottom. So moving these does the same thing. If you wanted a bit more control, you can adjust just the volume. I tend to use that one if I know that that frequency level is fine, but I just wanna raise it rather than pushing it with the mouse and risk maybe pushing it pushing the frequency off a bit. You can use this uh, slider here to just go straight up and down in volume and no risk of changing the actual frequency of that band. So I can confidently boost and reduce that <clears throat> without clicking on it and actually risking changing the frequency. You can also come up here to change the different curves. So for EQ band four, which is the yellow one here, I can switch through the different curves. Let's just have a look at them. So low shelf, more of a bow, high shelf, the low cut, the notch. So you can just hone in on a specific frequency of that. And then the high cut as well. Then you can completely turn it off by dragging it all the way to the bottom. Just a quick one on that is the curves are also found under the type here. And then you can actually set a specific frequency for that uh, point as well, which is quite useful. 
So you could set this to F4, for instance, and then that would snap directly to F4. It can be useful if you're EQing something tonal and you want to bring out a certain note. Okay, and you can also just turn on and off the uh, band markers here at the bottom. I'd recommend keeping that on, and then there's also a high quality, which basically introduces oversampling. I don't recommend keeping that on as well. Okay, so that's a quick look at the uh, EQ2. Really powerful tool, great for doing detailed work. Finally, the last one I want to show you is the EQUO. Now this is quite a unique tool here. So we've got, um, sorry, so we've got a uh, an EQ with various different curves here at the bottom. You see you've got one, two, three, and they're all different curves. And you can edit those curves. You've got a really specific editor, so you can edit each point there. You've got a line editor, so you can implement a straight line or this uh, curved function. So you can get quite into that and create a very specific curve there. So the, act so the idea here is that you can morph between, so the signal is morph morphed between these different EQ curves. So there's, it introduces movement to an otherwise static EQ. So let's have a listen to how that sounds on this drum loop. So yeah, you can imagine the possibilities using this on things like synthesizers and processing it into a maybe a multiband compressor with some vocoding going on and then flicking between the different EQ curves, morphing between them. Some really great possibilities for some sound design there. And uh, yeah, as you saw before, you can also make this huge so you've got real good control over it. So in this video, we've looked at the three different EQ plugins in FL Studio and the different ways you might want to use them in your projects.